In this video, I'll describe how fully associative cache memories work. Before talking about associative caches, I want to describe associative memories. Here's a traditional memory. Okay, the idea is this uh, dashed outline uh, refers to a single chip or maybe a, s a memory module. Inside of that, you've got the data, which is in black, and it's a sequence of bytes. Each byte has an address. Now, the address is implicit, but uh, they start at zero and go sequentially, one, two, three, all the way up to some maximum. Uh, in this case, I've got a maximum of 16 bits, so I can say that this is a 64K uh, memory address space. But uh, regardless of whether it's 32 bits or 16 bits or whatever, the idea is that an address can be fed into the memory unit, and in the case of a read operation, uh, the data will come out of the memory. So the address goes in, the addresses are implicit, all the addresses are there, there's a byte for every single address, so regardless of what address you put in, you will get uh, a data value out. Now with an associative memory, these things are a little bit different. The idea is you've got a key and a value stored. So you've got a bunch of pairs. Each pair is a key and a value. So each, each one of these lines has both a key and a value. And to use this, for example, for a read, you put a key in and a value comes out. It may come out. Not all keys are present. Okay, in, in the case of a normal memory, it doesn't matter what address you put in, there is a byte there for that address, so something will come out. And in this case, you've got 64,000 64, uh, different uh, bytes, so something will come out because you've only got 64,000 different addresses. With an associative memory, the keys may be much larger. You may not have very many lines, and typically these things don't have very many lines. Uh, they might have uh, 16 or 32 or, or, or maybe, you know, 512 lines, but they, they don't have 64,000 lines. All of these lines are searched in parallel for a match. So the key goes in and a match is made. And if a match occurs, then the data may come out. But you can also have another result, which is that there is no match. Here I happen to have shown the keys to be the same size as these addresses here, but the keys can actually be, you know, any size. They can be much larger. So with the traditional memory, the addresses have a certain size. For example, they might be 16 bits as they were in my previous example. And in such a case, you would have 64,000 different values stored. In general, you have two to the n values in the in the memory. With an associative memory, the key can be any size at all. It might be, for example, 29 bits or, or some other number. And we also have a small number of lines. Here I'm showing the lines running across like this. So here's a line, here's a line, and we have a small number of lines in a typical associative memory, maybe you know something like 32 different lines. Um, we've got the key stored in one part of the line and we've got the value stored in another part of the line. And the uh, associative memory works like this. The hardware works like this. You've got a bunch of wires running up, okay, shown in green here, and they deliver the key into the chip or into this part of the chip, into this hardware. And you've got other wires running uh, down here like this and this is where the value comes out. Okay, so uh, we've got a small number of lines in the associative memory and the key goes in. Uh, so if we have a 29-bit key, for example, we'd have 29 of these wires here. And so uh, the key goes in here and in parallel that signal, pro those signals propagate all the way through the associative memory and each line will 
match or try to match uh, its key against the values on those wires. So the key goes in, it's carried to all of the lines by these uh, parallel uh, wires, and all the lines in parallel will look to see whether they happen to match. And if one line matches, then that line will uh, you know, stand up and wave its arms and say, yeah, yeah, it's me, I match. And so what will that line then do? What it will do is it will drive these wires here, these output wires. So I don't know how big the value is. Well, uh, for a cache, the values will be blocks of data. So we might have eight bytes or, or maybe even 64 bytes. We have a bunch of uh, parallel wires coming out. So the matching line drives these wires. The other lines don't touch the wires. They don't put any values onto the wires. And so a key, uh, perhaps 32 bits, goes in, uh, a match is found, and the value comes out. So with a cache memory, with a fully associative cache memory, the key is the address of the block and the value is the block data. Maybe it's 8 bytes, uh, maybe it's um, 64 bytes, but usually it's a fairly large amount of, of data. And so the address of the block goes in, and if that block is stored in the cache, then the data from that block comes out along these wires here. Now let's look at an example that's a little bit more realistic. This is an example of a fully associative cache. We're going to look at uh, an example where the block size is 64 bytes, so we can denote that B, and the number of lines in this associative memory will be 512 lines. And so therefore, the size of the cache is the block size times the number of lines in the associative memory, B times L. In this case, it's uh, 32 kilobytes. Now, this is only the block data that's in each line. There's also the key and maybe some other bits like the dirty bit or the valid bit. We don't include all those other bits. We just include the data bit when we're measuring the cache size, even though more bits are actually stored. So when we say 32 kilobyte cache, we're saying that the block size times the number of lines is 32 kilobytes. And we've just got one set, so this is a fully associative uh, cache memory. We can say it's uh, a set associative cache memory with only one set. And let's look at an example where our addresses are 32 bits in length. The more modern processors, they might be uh, 48 bits or 64 bits. But for this example, we'll use 32 bits. And each address then consists of two parts. We've got what we call a block offset. That's going to have to be six bits. We need to address a particular byte within the block. These blocks have 64 bytes. So since 2 to the 6th is 64, we need six bits to select which byte from the block. So this is a number ranging between 0 and 63. It picks out the block in the byte, and that's the block offset. The remainder of the address is going to be the key. And so we've got 32 bits minus the 6 leaves 26 bits. And this key we also call a tag. Okay, So we've got a 26-bit tag. Let's talk about how this fully associative cache will operate. Now I'm presenting it sort of like a program here, but keep in mind the cache is all hardware. Okay, It's meant to be extremely fast, so all of the stuff I'm about to tell you about uh, will happen in hardware, so it will happen uh, within just a small number of clock cycles. So the cache unit is a hardware unit that takes an input and that input is an address. In our example, we're looking at 32 bits. So the first step 
is to separate out the tag from the offset. Remember that the offset is 6 bits and the tag is 26 bits. And the cache contains an associative memory. It's got 512 lines in it. Um, each line has a key and a value. The key is a 26-bit tag and the value is a 64-byte block of data. So in the first in the in the second step we send the 26 bit tag from the address to the associative memory and from that we either have a match or we don't and if we have a match then the block data from the matching line comes out so we retrieve a 64 byte block of data from the associative memory if we find a match, then that means one of the lines in the cache has a key that matches this tag from the address. And so if we have a match, 64 bytes come out. The data from that line is fed out and the cache uh, system then uses the 6-bit offset to extract the desired byte or bytes and it sends those onto the CPU. Um, if the associative memory does not contain a line that matches, in other words, if the keys for all the lines are different than the 26-bit tag, then there's no match. So at that point, the cache hardware has to select a block from the associative memory to evict. And the cache is going to select the least recently used uh, block, least recently used line of memory, and it's going to evict it. Now we haven't really talked about how we implement the least recently used algorithm, but we would obviously need a few more bits to uh, detect which one is least recently used. And furthermore, we'd have to update those bits every time we use a block. But I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, but assuming the cache hardware can figure out which uh, block to evict, it uh, then we'll ask whether the dirty bit for that block is set. If the dirty bit is set, then that block has been modified and it needs now to write that data back to memory. So it has to take a time out, so to speak, and take the extra time to copy the block data back to memory because it's been updated somehow. And after that, it then will send the tag value from the address, the 26 tag bit tag value that we got out of the address, to the main memory. And the main memory will uh, respond uh, by sending 64 bytes of data back. And at that point, the hardware can update that particular line in the associative memory. So it needs to update the uh, key portion, the data portion, as well as uh, clear the dirty and uh, set the valid bits. Uh, also uh, reset any least recently used bits as well. Um, at the same time, uh, the cache hardware will extract the byte that the CPU wants back. So it will use the offset from the address to extract the byte of interest and it will then send that byte on back to the CPU. So that's a fully set associative cache memory. We've got just one set and uh, the entire cache is stored in the lines in that fully associative memory. In the next video we'll look at direct mapped caches.